In this segment, we're diving into the material test tool in Lightburn. Let's get started. So what is the material test tool? Well, it's a semi-automated way of telling the software what you want to test and what the incremented values are for those test parameters, and it makes a grid for you and tests it for you. So in the old days, you used to have to test things individually one at a time, or you make your own little grid and assign each little thing one at a time. And you could spend an hour or more just setting up your own little test grid. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. It just does it. You could set up a test grid in like 15 seconds and have it sent over to the laser if it's ready to go. So yeah, we're gonna go through that. And you might be saying to yourself right about now, but Kyle, what about the material libraries online? Are they just useless then? Well, no, not exactly. Some of them might be, in fairness. If they don't have the proper settings all filled out, if there's a lot of blanks left, if the material that they're using isn't defined enough and so you're not using the same material they're using, or if they don't give enough information about their machine or their lens or anything else they're working with. It may be very difficult to exchange the information that they provide to make it useful for you. So yes, some settings being shared aren't exactly great, and that's okay. We're working as a community to try and make that better. So on the Laser Everything community library pages, everybody is required to fill out certain categories of information. And that's not to waste anybody's time, that is to help improve the community and make everything easier for everyone. So that information being required is going to help make it easier for somebody to have a good starting point, whether they have the same machine, same lens, or a completely different machine. It gives them a value to start off with so that they can estimate where they need to be with their machine. Now, having a starting point is great. If you don't have a starting point, that's okay too. You're just gonna need to do more material testing. You might have to start with a wider range of parameters and tune it in with the follow-up test, and that's okay. If you do have a starting list of parameters to originate your settings from or get a ballpark on, that's fantastic because that means you can do less testing. You can either do smaller increments of testing for your parameters, or you can do less of them and make your parameter testing grid smaller. And what that allows you to do is to be a little bit more time effective, a lot more cost effective potentially, depending on the material you're working on, and also environmentally friendly. Those are just three pros to this. I'm sure there's plenty more, but just consider the fact that maybe you're working with a material that there's a limited quantity of. Maybe you don't have a ton of it, or maybe it's not even available in your area or it's just a very scarce resource. So depending on what you're working with, this can be very, very, very good in many ways. Okay, so next question. How does this thing really work? Well, again, it's a tool in Lightburn. So let's jump into Lightburn and we'll walk through it together. Okay, so I have my CO2 gantry here and we're in Lightburn and I have some material I'd like to use for an engraving project. I've been engraving birch ply for a while now and I've engraved it before but now this is a brand or a thickness I haven't worked with, as an example. What I'll do is I'll use my original birch ply settings as a starting point and do a test that varies in speed and power to see what type of adjustment I may need. I'm gonna use the same line interval or line distance to do the engrave. That way we're doing apples to apples comparison here. And I'm only varying in the speed and the power. Now you can change all kinds of parameters with this. It's not limited to that, but this is just an example. So again, what I'm doing is I'm taking the parameters from my existing birch ply setting and I'm working that into a test. Now what I'm doing is I'm dropping the power below where I would normally be and going a little bit above where I would normally be. And then I'm also in the testing parameters, varying my speed lower than I would be normally and up to or higher where I would be normally. Now what this is going to do is it's going to vary in speed as we go in one direction up the grid and it's going to vary in power as we go the other direction up the grid. That's going to give us a little bit of a curve in good or bad or burned out settings. And we can identify which settings are good and which settings aren't. And we can adjust that test if we need to in the future as well. So if we find that all of these are unacceptably burnt up or just don't work out great, we can tune into a much narrower patch of settings by narrowing the, the minimum and maximum speed and the minimum and maximum power. And we can adjust for what we need. 
Another awesome feature of this is it's not limited to fill layers. So later we'll do a cut test as well, um, where we can use a line type layer instead of a fill type for trying out different cut values. And as you can see, this test is finishing up and that's what a material test looks like. Again, as you saw, only took just a couple of seconds to do. We went in, we chose what we were testing. In this case, it was speed and power, and we set minimum and maximum values, and it generated a grid. We just had to frame it up and hit start. This is, again, just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to an example of testing materials and fine tuning your settings for ideal results. So as promised, we finished up our engrave testing. We're gonna go ahead and move over to cut testing. So we need to switch our layer setting over from fill to line mode. Additionally, we also need to update our speed and our power settings. So we need to cut back on that speed way, way far and get it more in line with a cut value. Generally speaking, for most things, you're going to be going way, way slower for cutting material versus engraving it and power is going to be potentially a bit higher. Now, this is just the edge of the iceberg when it comes to examples for testing materials and fine tuning your settings, so keep that in mind. But if you need excellent starting parameters, check out your free starter material library options at lasereverything.net. We have those updated and uploaded, and there's also community-based parameter library for CO2, UV, fiber, and soon diode where anyone can submit their tune parameters to help others out with good starting point. Again, it's just a starting point. You're gonna have to do some testing and that's what this tool is all about, is fine tuning for what your laser needs. If you appreciate the tools that we've made and shared for the community, please consider checking out the Laser Master Academy, the LMA, where you can contribute to supporting our team to do all the awesome content, projects, and creation of community tools that we contribute all our time to. Big thanks to the LMA members. We couldn't do any of this awesome stuff without you and your support. Additionally, there is a link to the parameter converter made by a member of the community, Shark, AKA David, who was kind enough to provide his time and program to everyone as well. You can also buy him a coffee at the link on that page as well. And yeah, it's fantastic and it's all a community effort. As I mentioned, this is all just the start. You can do this for all supported laters. Like I mentioned, fiber, UV, CO2, gantry, galvo, diode, everything. The world is full of materials to test. The only limitation in this case is sticking with safe materials, which I would suggest to avoid for one personal injury, two machine damage, and the people around you. You wanna keep everyone safe and healthy and following other suggested safety guidelines, of course. Just to reference safety as well, we do also have a suggested material avoidance library or material safety page on our website. We're adding to it all the time as we get questions about different materials, and we do update that as we come across ones that aren't safe. Now, just as another use case, this can be helpful in the case that you're looking, for example, a darker mark on your wood, where simply turning up the power isn't necessarily an option because it turns the wood to charcoal or lights it on fire, and turning down the speed does the same. You could do things like testing your line interval or line distance to get an overlap or slightly underlapping effect to get the mark that you want. Another option is for fiber laser, or UV laser, or even CO2 laser where frequency is involved. You can test different frequency ranges for your laser. You can also do pulse width, Basically every parameter that you can interact with your laser with, generally speaking, you can mess with with the material test tool. So it's a fantastic way of fine tuning your marks, looking for colors on fiber, on stainless steel or titanium, or looking for a desired result on whatever material you're working with. So just a helpful tip there. The limit really is your creativity, the material you're working with, and the ability to test. That's it on the material test tool, everybody. Please smash that like button, get subscribed, and hit the bell icon so you get notified the next time we go live or upload a video. Have a great one, everybody, and we'll see you in just a minute.